We are now joined by uh, Parimal Shah, Vice President at MK Jokai Agri Plantations. Mr. Shah, thanks so much for joining in. Uh, very good to have you on the show. You know, Assam accounts for about 53% uh, of India's total tea production, and we're getting estimates that tea production in Assam fell by as much as 31 million kgs uh, on the back of the sort of disruptions that we've seen there. How much of a production fall are you anticipating for this fiscal? Is it about 1% uh, to 2% or is it more? Well, uh, but well, good morning, uh, Hiroland. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, yes, you're right. Uh, especially on account of uh, the weather, mainly the excessive rainfall during September, we've seen a substantial uh, crop decline um, across Assam and also other parts of uh, Northeast India. 31 million kilograms, yes, that is what uh, the figure is. And uh, I see, uh, well, well, in October, we have seen uh, the crop uh, being made up a bit. But overall, if you see, then uh, we are behind by close to 42 million across the northeastern part of India, with Assam uh, being the chunk of it. And uh, uh, going forward, uh, 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 October month has made up a bit of the crop, but uh, we don't we don't see us beating last year's figures. Obviously, um, I would peg the fall at uh, close to two to two and a half percent at the end of the fiscal. All right, two to two and a half percent uh, fall in terms of production this time. And unseasonal rainfall uh, has been a key disruptor in different parts of the country. The majority of the tea is uh, produced during these July to November months. So, in terms of uh, you know the the crop shortage that we're looking at for the year and volumes, uh, what are you anticipating? Well, uh, Assam is uh, <clears throat> close to 50, 52 to fifty three percent of the uh, overall uh, uh, overall production of India. And uh, the months of September and October, they account uh, for a very large chunk of the annual production on an average. Uh, so to give you some perspective, uh, normally these are the months where close to 35, 30 to 35 percent of the Indian tea production is uh, taken into account, mainly because these are large cropping months. But when we see this kind of a decline, uh, you know, in the cropping months, obviously uh, at the end of the year, we are going to be seeing a decline in the overall tea production. And this is going to be hurting the, uh, uh, you know, uh, the tea industry as a whole. But yes, uh, because the prices are up, you know, largely on account of the supply crunch. Uh, if you see, uh, you know, at the end of the year, uh, we, 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 we do feel that the prices uh, uh, would, would be averaging to the tune of close to 8 to 10 percent higher than what we see last year. All right, 8 to 10% uh, higher prices uh, compared to last year. And, and if we look at, uh, you know, uh, in terms of the climactic factors, really, and the sort of disruptions we've seen because of the rainfall, do you expect this to normalize then by next year? Yes, yes. I, I, I see, uh, uh, this year, uh, apart from Assam, uh, uh, one of the other issues which we have seen is also the crop loss in Darjeeling. So we don't, we don't see, uh, you know, an issue coming in Darjeeling next year, hopefully. And of course, uh, this is this is not going to be a very persistent trend because um, uh, uh, the Darjeeling uh, Gorkha Land stir is obviously a one-off event, and uh, we've lost close to eight million kilograms because of this uh, this problem. Obviously, Darjeeling next year will be much better. Assam, hopefully, we cannot predict because the climatic uh, uh, you know changes are very severe. We've been having very erratic rainfalls when we don't need them. We've not been having rainfalls when we need them. So that is something which is difficult to predict. But yes, going forward next year, the situation does uh, uh, would would normalize, and uh, we would be having a more stable crop pattern. But at the same time, I I must add that uh, we don't see a reduction in prices uh, coming about because the costs of productions uh, they are they are they are shooting up a lot. In the past uh, two and a half years itself, we have seen close to 45 percent increase in the cost of production, mainly on account of uh, the labor wages. Which comprises of close to 55 percent of, uh, you know, the balance sheet of an ET farmer. So, um, uh, you know, uh, we, we 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 do see uh, significant, uh, uh, and and the demand for tea across the country is increasing at the rate of close to four to six percent every year. Uh, the supply is not, uh, you know, uh, matching up that at least not this year. Next year, even if we do have a normalized situation, the demand will still be higher, and there will be a significant. Uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, stability as far as uh, pricing is concerned. So yes, we do see the pricing going up next year. We do see the supply normalizing. Going forward, uh, uh, we see that uh, there will uh, there, there there will be a fair amount of consolidation in the tea industry. Those uh, farmers who are unable to meet the quality demands of the market will not be able to meet their costs because uh, it's only the better quality teas in the market right now which are selling. 
which are uh, getting the premium of let's say 15 to 20 percent higher than last year. The planar sorts, they are hardly higher by more than four to six rupees or maybe five rupees and that is also mainly because of the supply crunch, which is not uh, an intrinsic increase in the tea price. Only the quality tea players, which are able to make uh, better quality teas, better liquoring teas, are able to see the 20 rupee hike per kilogram. And these are the people who are able to survive the uh, labor uh, wages spike, uh, the other cost increases. So yes, there will be a fair amount of consolidation. Uh, people who are not able to meet the quality standards may be forced to sell their stakes or may not be able to survive or sustain. And those who are able to keep their heads above the water, they are, they are, they're going to be the people who are in the quality uh, game. All right, fair amount of consolidation in the tea space as demand for better quality tea, uh, you know, really ramps up. Are you looking at the next fiscal uh, as a time frame for this, this kind of consolidation to take place? Yes, I think uh, a lot of it, uh, we are, we are uh, getting a lot of uh, rumors already are circulating in the market. Obviously, uh, nothing much can be said about that. But uh, if we look at even uh, some of this, uh, well, most of the small growers are finding it very difficult to stay in the market. They are uh, going for uh, many different ways of trying to cut costs or trying to increase the crop. But at the end of the day, the more you uh, uh, you know play with uh, these parameters, you end up sacrificing the quality. Even the big players, some of the big players are unable to meet the costs. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, it's, it's it's only the people who are able to focus on quality. They are they are the people who are getting the benefit in the auctions or in the export market. Right. You also mentioned uh, you know the the wage hikes and the demand for wage hikes, uh, uh, an increase in some places from as much as uh, 137 to 350 rupees a day for daily wage uh, workers here. What kind of impact do you anticipate on margins of tea companies are uh, going into the next fiscal? See, the tea industry in the past uh, several years has been seeing a very uh, low margin balance sheet, and uh, this increase in wage helping us obviously we understand that uh, uh, the, the the government is doing this in the interest of the population we respect that but uh, you know the thing is that uh, there has to be um, you know a balance between rising costs and rising prices uh, here of course uh, it's it's more about the industry mindset the industry mindset has always been uh, to treat tea as a commodity Whereas if we see uh, in markets abroad, it's, no, it's, it's more of a lifestyle product. Uh, if you were to put any perspective in these figures, uh, you know, India is 24% uh, of the world's tea production with, uh, with close to 1,300 million kilograms. And we only export 18% of this, which is uh, some 235 odd million kilograms, uh, which, which comes to only 4,700 crores. Our total tea industry, which is uh, 1,300 million, uh, million kilograms, is... Um, uh, yeah. I think it's around close to 29 to 30,000 crores annually. So that is, the, uh, that is the size of our industry. But if we see the tea market globally, it is to the tune of close to 49.5 billion US dollars. So uh, being, being a 24% player in uh, the production, we have less than 9% stake in this uh, entire pie. So uh, this, this shows that there is a very large value gap, obviously, which needs to be closed. And this is only possible when we start uh, giving tea that regard, which is given to a lifestyle product, which means that we start talking about value addition, we start talking about branding, we start talking about uh, better quality, uh, better aesthetics on the shelf. And uh, this, is, this is something which we don't see yet in the Indian market. Uh, for example, uh, the, the, the recent statistics show that uh, the average price uh, of a kilogram of tea on the retail shelf as of now in India, is around 210 to 215 Indian rupees. Right. This is this is lower than the cost of production for most tea farmers. So when uh, you know the retail segment uh, does not uh, uh, have that, uh, when 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 we are not able to leverage that uh, right. potential. In uh, how is it that the farmers would make a balance sheet at the end? Absolutely. Of the day? Uh, very fair point there, uh, Mr. Shah. We'll have to leave it at that, uh, unfortunately. But thanks so much. Uh, very important comments. 8 to 10 percent a price hike expected in tea going into the rest of the year. That's Parimal Shah of uh, MK Jokai Agri Plantations. But let's uh, shift the focus uh, now.